Welcome back to All Things Money. I'm David Blaine, and tonight we're talking about some of the myths of investing in the stock market. And we covered the first couple uh, that this is a good time to invest in the stock market, and stocks on average make you 10% a year. And we've largely debunked those two myths. Um, the third one we want to talk about is uh, if you missed the first segment, you can catch it on the uh, on our website www.dlblain.com. That's d l b l a i n dot com. Uh, we'll have uh, the archives of the show posted um, in a in a week or so. Uh, so the third myth we want to talk about is that our economists are forecasting. Uh, whenever you hear some of the big brokerage firms or CNBC, you know, they get these economists on there and they say, well, we're forecasting this. Um, there's a little joke that we have that uh, economists have forecasted uh, uh, 10 out of the last five recessions, meaning that um, their, their forecasts are largely unreliable. And, it, and it's true um, that economists... Um, although they have a bunch of degrees and they study this stuff all the time, the world's economy, the U.S.'s economy, are much too complex to forecast. Now, there are some somewhat reliable indicators that um, show historically what has happened um, based on what is going on in the economy currently, but no one knows for sure what is going to happen into the future. And the record of uh, economic forecasts is, is not, not very impressive uh, whatsoever. Um, and I, I think it was, um, uh, someone said, uh, Mark Twain, I think it was, that um, prediction is very difficult, especially about the future. And so whenever you hear about economists are predicting, um, I always listen to that with a grain of salt. Um, there are some lessons to be learned from history, uh, some macro things, but in terms of um, exactly what's going to happen, I mean, look at the uh, unemployment, um, you know, the, the stimulus that was injected into the economy uh, was supposed to bring uh, unemployment down, and, and although I happen to disagree with a lot of these economists, they're very smart people, they have been pat right in the past, in this particular case, you know, they were dead wrong. There were other economists on the other side of the fence that were predicting that the stimulus would not do anything um, to the economy. So once again, uh, this prediction about the future is extremely difficult, and I would encourage you to, to largely um, ignore it uh, if possible. Um, number four, investing in the stock market lets you participate in the growth of the economy. And this is a great one. I've done a lot of independent data testing on this particular statistic. And when you look at time periods in the U.S., and, and I'm talking about the U.S. right now because that's what I've studied, when you look at time periods when earnings were growing the most, uh, the, the, um, the stock market did not necessarily uh, follow suit. Um, and there are other times when uh, earnings have been relatively flat that the stock market um, was growing. A lot of this has to do with the PE expansion. That when you look at the growth of economy, um, you know, averages somewhere between you know one to two percent per year, and on average, that's what corporations are going to grow. But the large increases in the stock market is actually due to the increased optimism of the investors in the market. And what this does is it causes them to bid up the prices in stocks. It raises the P.E. or price-to-earnings ratio. In other words, how much uh, are investors willing to pay for a dollar of earnings is essentially what the P.E. ratio is. And you see that the growth of the economy, yes, it contributes to the returns of the stock market. But if you actually study the data, the majority of the large returns in the stock market have come simply from the expansion of the P.E., uh, the optimism of the investors bidding up the prices. And so it's somewhat of a myth that investing in the market um, lets you participate in the growth of the economy. It is largely believed that, yes, um, stocks provide some term of, of inflation hedge that as you know, the price of goods and services go up, uh, the price of stocks go up. And there is some validity to that, um, but certainly not to the, the tune of 10% per year. The fifth major uh, um, myth that we want to address is if you want higher returns, you have to take uh, more risk. 
And um, there's some validity to this, but it depends on how um, you define risk. Um, that the stock market is generally perceived as riskier than the bond market as a whole, but there are times uh, when the bond market, in fact, may be riskier than the stock market. A good example would be March of 2009 when stocks were severely down, the bond market was way up, uh, especially the long-term treasury market. At that point in time, actually the low-risk move at that point would be to purchase um, stocks. Uh, as well, um, you don't have to go out and buy, you know, small companies with no earnings that are investing in some alternative energy source to make money. A good example, um, Warren Buffett largely invests in um, boring um, industrial consumer type uh, companies that aren't that flashy. They're not developing new technology. I mean, he invests in a, a candy company, a furniture company, insurance. And so, although these are stocks and there's some risk involved with that, they don't have to be these high risk stocks to make money. And so that's another myth that um, you necessarily have to take more risk to make more money. In fact, if you combine um, 100% stock portfolio with a small percentage of bonds, it's actually a lower risk portfolio, but in the long run you make more money. And the reason is, is because the bonds help dampen the volatility of the up and down of the stock market. So there's another example of where taking less risk by not having 100% stocks, you actually end up making more uh, return. And so that, the myth that you absolutely have to take more risk uh, to make higher returns is just simply not true. Well, that brings us to our second uh, break. When we come back, we're going to continue on this uh, topic. For All Things Money, I'm David Blaine. 